Welcome. We're here at Painesville Municipal Court. We're in my office. Uh, it's very similar to the Victims Advocate Office, and we're here today to talk a little bit about our Victims Advocate program. Um, and we have Leanne from our Victims Advocate Office. We have Molly and Noel from Forbes House. And the purpose of our discussion is just to go over a little bit of, of victims' rights and how it works uh, in Painesville Municipal Court and throughout the courts of Ohio. So currently what will occur is a case would be filed in the Painesville Municipal Court and it's again that's coming from a police department who has filed charges against somebody and we will get notice that there is a victim in this matter. Now the court gets the charges so all we really know about the defendant and the incident is that something occurred and it violated certain provisions of the law whether it's an assault, whether it's a theft, whether it's a domestic violence. The victim's advocate's office would, know, would get notice that there is a victim in the, in the matter. And based upon that notice, the victim's advocate office would reach out to the victim so that they have a voice in that court. Now, when the judge hears the, the arraignment, the first time that that individual shows up to court, the judge will go over that defendant's rights. They'll go over, here's what the charges are, here's what your rights are, your constitutional rights, your trial, your trial rights. And the victim advocate then would be approach the, the judge and the defendant and address the victim and what the victim uh, occurred, what rights that they're looking for with regards to whether it's a no contact or a temporary protection order from the defendant. And that is the first time the court will get some flavor some facts of what took place there so that the court could make the appropriate um, pre-trial determinations and pre-trial restrictions on the defendant. And so Leanne here would step up and say, the defendant is looking, or the victim is looking for A, B, and C from the court. And Leanne, how often do you, do you um, speak on, on, on behalf of victims inside the Painesville Municipal Court? I would say fairly often um, our office represents victims of a lot of different crimes in this court. Um, criminal type cases as far as domestic violence, assault, and then um, theft cases, that's also victim cases, as well as traffic cases where there's an accident that occurs. So um, when the charges come into our court, I get a copy of the police report and the victim information and that way I can get in touch with the victim uh, hopefully prior to the arraignment as long as I have good information for them and then I contact them find out what's going on if it's a a case like a domestic violence or assault I try to typically find out uh, what the relationship is what they're looking for uh, as far as part of bond conditions so a protection order or a no contact order uh, their injuries etc um, cases like a uh, traffic accident, I'm looking for, um, did you receive the defendant's insurance from the police department so they can start processing their claims? If there's gonna be restitution involved, same thing with theft, um, if there's going to be restitution. So my job is to kind of gra gather that information and then present it to the judge at arraignment so we can um, start the case off with the victim having a part of um, you know if they want to no contact if they are they don't want to no contact if they want a protection order those type of things and when we talk about a no contact order that's usually uh, on, on the arraignment uh, sheet judgment entry I will suggest um, to, to the to the victim that we can place on there what's called the what Leanne refers to as no contact order but it's a condition that's is a bond condition. This individual cannot contact you during the pendency of this matter until this order is lifted. Now on that, that document goes to our clerk's office and then it gets entered into as a condition of, of this individual's bond. Generally the arresting agency is the only agency that knows that. The court's um, pretrial um, security knows that. Uh, the judge knows that, the victim's advocate knows that, the victim knows that, but again, that's not, that's not spread throughout 
you know, Northeastern Ohio and the, all the other police agencies. If you grant a te temporary protection order, which again is gonna require the, the victim to come in with the victim advocate being right uh, by their side, and they will provide some testimony to the court. Again, this is to make sure that the defendant in his constitutional rights or her constitutional rights are being uh, upheld because they have an opportunity to respond. But if that temporary protection order is granted, that would be placed in the uh, system, and when we say system, that's in the computer system so that police agencies know that. And, and, and so any agency can determine whether or not there's a protection order there. Now the limitations of those things is it's going to be based upon notice and so we want to get the most notice out and so obviously a temporary protection order has the most notice and is it is um, widely distributed so that individuals know that this person is protected from this defendant and therefore um, we, need, we need to keep an eye open for those things. On the other hand the no contact order and those are generally used in cases like thefts or um, uh, disorderly conducts, criminal trespass, stay away from this area, stay away from uh, this establishment. Those are generally commercial establishments. When we have domestic violences, those are more temporary protection orders. And we also have with us individuals from Forbes. We have Molly and Noel from the Forbes house and they spend a lot of time with victims of domestic violence. Miley, anything you wanna say about Forbes House and what their, their involvement is with domestic violence victims? Um, with Forbes House, my role um, specifically is the legal advocate. So I am in a way the court advocate as well. I'm here some days of the week to assist with Leanne on their domestic violence cases, um, making sure that the victims of those cases understand their rights as they both touched on with the no contact order and the temporary protection order. Um, I can help with resources, getting them referred to the right places for shelter if needed. Um, I know a stigma around Forbes House is that it's only there for shelter and you can only use their resources if you're staying in shelter, which is not true. I can help with legal portions, um, just as support and an advocate, I can assist with filing for civil protection orders um, as well over at the Common Pleas Court and um, help get you set up with support groups, individual counseling, um, possibly housing through Forbes House as well. So just because you're not staying at Forbes House does not mean that we're not able to help you as well through that. There is Marcy's Law that covers um, victims' rights, make sure that they have the right to have their voice heard in court, the right to fill out victim impact statements, the right to speak with the prosecutor if they need to, or even the judge at some points. Um, Marcy's Law covers all of that, and we're there to make sure that Marcy's Law is enforced, um, that at every point of the criminal justice um, court proceeding here, their victims' rights are being met, and if at any point they are violated, um, we're there to make sure the court's aware of that, get the victim resources to report that to who they would need to report that to as well. How often do we do we send cases that are domestic violence cases to the Forbes House for, for referrals? Uh, pretty often, especially in cases where victims are requiring services like counseling, shelter. Um, we. I certainly put them in touch with Molly. Molly is here with me two days a week, so she's here for a lot of the cases, um, and she will, you know, meet with these uh, domestic violence victims, explain what resources that Forbes House has available. Um, like she said prior to this, it's not just shelter. There's counseling opportunities um, and all sorts of other opportunities uh, that you know we have for victims in this county, not just in Forbes House, but in a lot of other areas too. So we just try to make sure they have all the resources they need. And another resource that we often use is um, is uh, Ohio Vine Link, which is uh, a, it will essentially let the victim know or anybody know if there's an inmate that is released from jail or prison. So we try to set them up with that so that they get immediate um, 
a notification when that inmate is released so um, they know what's going on with that as well. One of the things that Molly raised is, is civil protection orders and so as I mentioned earlier there's a no contact order um, that has its limitations then there's a temporary protection order that is um, uh, more widely distributed but again it's it's temporary and and what Molly does in in assisting individuals in getting um, a more permanent order is a civil protection order which um, can be on um, for a period of at least five years um, and then there are some ways to extend it past that five years but generally uh, those orders are up to five years and and the, uh, the idea of that is to get a temporary protection order and that gives you some time to go over to the common police court and litigate your civil protection order and the victim's advocates are there with the victims you know throughout the process making sure that um, they have that individual in their court uh, assisting them uh, encouraging them and, and more sp more specifically adding to the additional resources that they're going to need and those resources are counseling sometimes correct um, housing um, other 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 items that that will come up um, I think are, are generally just the the continuing resources of making sure that we have somebody to ask um, those hard questions to and explain just the process and how things go through it uh, Leanne what's your involvement in sending individuals over for civil protection orders um, typically I explain to victims that do uh, seek out temporary protection orders or stalking protection orders in our court. Um, I explain that we can get those orders at arraignment and they last the duration of the case. When you become a, a victim of crime and you know what court room or the courthouse that that, that uh, individual, that defendant that is charged is going to be going to, feel free to reach out to that court. We will make sure that, that all those calls go to the victim advocate and, and we will start the process of communicating with you and getting you that information. Again, our, our, our initial lead is always going to be that police report where the, there's a victim listed on it. But we, we will take all callers and, and try to uh, immediately put them with our victim's advocate uh, office and, and reach out to those victims so that they have an opportunity to be heard in every hearing.